Hello everyone and welcome back to another 10 deck deep dive. Today we're gonna go into the OG. As third US armored we haven't covered in a while, and it is still the first division for NATO side and 10, and also still one of the strongest, if not the strongest division in the game. So I thought let's give it a go again and let's talk about its strength, its couple of weaknesses, and yeah, its general usage for 1v1 purposes this is mostly built for 1v1 guys but it can work in team games absolutely fair as well i played it in team games as well with just some slight changes so let's go in here and let's start in the logistics tab where we have some m35s some hammets and some mud cps mud cps one out of three cvs cards the others come in form of m1a1 cps so seven cvs three fast ones four slower for the push and yeah, no infantry CVs because you need your infantry slots for other things. The Hammett's really good for artillery and helicopter resupply. The M35, really solid for everything else. So that gets you through the game. In team games, you can maybe get into the field supply point, but you don't really need it. Infantry tab is not the strong suit of this division anymore. It has lost the mech rifles and so on over the, the, the months and years. But it is still a decent tab. You get your Engineer Dragons, which can hold the town decently. The Dragon obviously nerfed quite a lot, but they still have the Shock Trait, so against other line infantry in CQC they do decently. They don't have an MG though, so it's still not amazing. The Dragon still pushes away APCs and IVs when they come a bit closer. Plus, to, with the change to minimum range, they're also somewhat useful in forests again. Uh, M67 kind of fills the same role, like those are your flank defenders with the M67 being able to hold a bit uh, better against infantries that try to push you in. And then you have another flank protector slash quick reinforcements in the aircraft. That's your other big squad next to the engineer dragons. You don't get any other big squads, so uh, you take them. Like you could take engineers, but you want to have something with ATs plus the... Uh, security here is pretty nice. So having the aircraft troopers plus the Blackhawk that can come in quickly and reinforce a flank uh, in the later stages of the game, really important and really helpful. And yep, that's why we take the aircraft troopers here. And then we come to our fire teams. We and there we have a fire team dragon with one star veterancy and the strong Bradleys, the Bradley. M2A2s, which are pretty solid on the push, thanks to their front, five frontal armor, which allows them to survive a lot of things, including um, Milan ones, including Medis, including dragons, and struck them off. Also, a lot of tanks don't quite one shot them, so they are really nice as an assistant IV on the push. And the fire team dragon on the other side, a bit better on the defense. Fire team Loa with an M2A1 Bradley uh, that comes on. 2 veterancy because the others don't have the great av availability on 2 vet, but this one does still have 4 availability. And the fire team lore is pretty cheap. You get a high vet Bradley, which pushes its accuracy into absolutely insane numbers. Like <laughs> four, uh, 84 on the Bushmaster means that the Bushmaster is an absolute killer. 75 on the Toe 2 means that the Toe 2 is an absolute murder of a uh, weapon. So. The, this Bradley becomes super deadly. It's still a class cannon with only three frontal armor on the A1 module, so you want to keep it a bit more defensive. But on the defense, this is fantastic. Plus the fire team with two veterancy for 30 points is a really strong defensive unit as well, as the boosts to its light machine guns are quite helpful there too. The rate of fire and accuracy on the law helping out on the defense as well. And then we have some fire team AT4s. And those come with Bradleys because you need some cheap units around. So, and these with the 84 also can hold the flank better than when you just would take a normal law, which would be a bit cheaper and one more availability, sure. But with the 84, they can kill and one shot a lot more vehicles and also harm tanks a decent bit better than the ones of the law. So the Fireteam 84 here as a quick Unit for reinforcements plus uh, yeah, holding flanks, holding angles, uh, where the 84 can be really, really helpful. And that gets you to 36 infantry, somewhat on the low side, together with the Toe 2, which 
absolutely is a necessity. Hits hard, kills things. Um, in tournament games, you might want to change it to the Ito in some matchups, as more availability and cheaper. And if 20 pen is enough, you don't need the extra pen of the toe 2. The extra you know, uh, accuracy is nice and all, but you don't need quite need that. So then you might change to the Ito, but normally the toe 2 is the go-to. And if yeah, that rounds out the infantry tab, somewhat small, obviously, it, it's, it's still a tank division. And uh, manpower here is not amazing, but it should get you through the game. It's mostly for defensive purposes, so that is fine. Artillery, we get M109s to snipe enemy ATGMs, to snipe uh, enemy uh, vehicles, ATGM vehicles, enemy CVs, to try to kill enemy AA that could deal with your helicopters and all of that. And then an M270 cluster, because they can be pretty helpful setting up a push. Like, I don't use it too, too often, but sometimes you really need it. And I've found that as this deck is a lot about uh, long-range engagements, the smokes of the mortars is not that important, and the mortars outside of that, you don't really use them for softening up for infantry pushes or so either, so I usually didn't need mortars, so I put in the M270, as th this slot is a two-cost slot, if you could would take it out, you could take something else elsewhere as well. You could just go with the M109s. But I felt like this was a nice tool sometimes to soften up for your M1 uh, A1 pushes and your M1A1HA pushes. And maybe kill off some ATGM vehicles in the forest. Maybe damage their tank formation and stress it out so much that they can't really engage your tanks anymore when they push forward and run them down. So the M270, sometimes a nice surprise that can hit your enemy pretty hard. Tank tap is a lot of m one ones None of them zero vet because they are so expensive that you don't want to have them on zero vet. The stress recovery per uh, second is more than three times higher on one vet, plus all the other bonuses that it gives. But it means that if you take them on zero vet, your tanks, when they get stressed out by enemy artillery fire, by uh, some light ATGM hits or so, they can be combat inefficient for so long and you can't afford that because you can't buy that many vehicles at a time so you need to have those that you have constantly active and firing so uh, next to all the other bonuses which are all helpful as well especially the stress recovery is important with the stress resistance on top like the, the multiplier is even higher than three it's closer to four so yeah this is pretty big and that's why you want to have everything on one vet including your HAs. Yes, it halves their availability. Uh, same goes here, but you still have a decent amount of M1s. You still get 13 of them with this layout. 3 HAs, 10 M1A1s and then the 6 calves which are here because they give you a 50 cal and they give you a gun that can stun down things. It's not an amazing vehicle currently, but it is cheap and it gets some frontal armor and can and help out in infantry fights and you need things that can help out with infantry fights more than you need for example more toes or anything so these guys here helpful as well veterancy on them not really worth it in my feelings so that's why i leave these at zero vet but yeah with the others it's pretty key um, and the m1a1 ha's three of them is nice as well um, you sometimes lose one or two of them to lgbs or something like that and then the third one can come in clutch and was after you shut down all the enemy LGBs if you're a bit unfortunate so I feel like three is the nice number four you usually can't afford because it's still uh, more than three minutes of your income completely invested into these guys so it is still really expensive uh, but the M1A1 HAs they are still really worth it if they make it to the front line. The penetration and the extra frontal armor really great. You just need to have the support network to not have them immediately eat an LGB or similar things. And the speed difference. Ah, no, no, there is no speed difference anymore. But yeah, M1A1 HA, decent one as well. Mistake by me there. Recon tab is a solid one. Uh, we get some snipers which can be pretty clutch as holding a position in the early game. With that trade active, they can really actually hold enemies off quite nicely. Plus, with the forward deploy, you can get them into nice sneaky positions. The normal scouts, 
they are just here to spot things and bring the, uh, you bring them around for the flanks. The uh, ACAF combined with them can be sometimes nice, but I feel like that's 55 points that you usually can't afford to invest here. Plus, you want to have them somewhat uh, another fast recon on the front line with the M150 and the Bradley. You already have two slower ones. Uh, uh, so, the scouts here coming on uh, the M151 so that you can sell those as well and invest that into more Abrams and so on. And as the CV MUD also doesn't really have optics that help you too, too much here. So, the scouts moving around, holding some nice recon positions to help out your other units f shooting because only when you see something your m1a ones are really helpful and then the m150s to hold the flank cheaply with a tow like holding off enemy vehicles nicely the tow decent range shitty penetration pretty bad accuracy but the range is and the suppression is what makes it helpful as that just keeps enemy vehicles from just rolling plus with the smoke it can also Move a bit around and the 50 cal can come in in a pinch against infantry as well. And then the recon Bradley, uh, helpful with the pushes and also with veterancy, can get quite decent in killing uh, as well. Having a nice tow to veterancy that has 70 pen as uh, accuracy is quite nice as well. So that is pretty important as well. That's why taking a veterancy plus stress recovery can come in sometimes as well and stress resilience so that they don't get stunned down immediately. Um, and I also often don't quite see me buying four. A three on one vet would be fantastic, but you know, two is fine usually to get me through the game. You have to be a bit more careful of them then, but they are still um, somewhat survivable with their smoke and so on. So yeah, just, just keep them safe, and then the tow 2 is really good. And the extra veterancy on the accuracy helps out nicely as well. AA, stingers with veterancy, because you can't afford super many of them. So you want the ones, plus you can't afford losing your tanks, so you want the, the ones that you get to hit and get a bit better. Plus, this way they also level up quicker, because that's another thing, that the jump from 0 vet to 1 vet is as expensive in damage dealt to the enemy as the one from one vet to elite and this way stingers can actually get elite decently often uh, when they get a couple of hits in and a couple of kills then you and then you have a elite stinger or at least a veteran stinger and that makes them even better so one vet on uh, the stingers is quite nice plus the availability hit is there but it's not insane so i take those on one vet for Chaprals, I can't quite say the same. Plus, upvetting them with damage is also harder because they're more expensive uh, on their own. So, that doesn't really happen that often. And so, it's not really worth it for that. And I kind of just want to have them in numbers. So, that's why I take the one zero vet here and have eight of them around on the battlefield. Helicopters. You want to have your ATGM Apaches for holding against enemy armored pushes that are in gnarly positions where M1A ones might struggle and uh, yeah just just holding a flank when the enemy forgets about enemy uh, any AA or you kill the AA and then you can bring in the Apache to mop up a push and the Cobras here more so for dealing with infantry the Toe Cobra as the combining factor a bit you know, dealing with IVs and infantry the normal Cobra just for dealing with infantry for the most part uh, doing their job as well the rocket apache not really worth it 200 points is really expensive plus you only get one like yes it's it's a decent one it has only similar firepower to the cobra though and costs 70 points more plus yeah half the availability so the cobra it is instead here and again yeah, tow cobra and cobra coming in rounding out the helicopter tap with the atgm apache an absolute hunter though yeah the lack of the normal apache with eight hellfires and rockets is a bit uh was a bit of a hit but it's it's a uh, one that third absolutely can take because they're still a really strong powerhouse and these apaches are still fantastic air you get eagles and phantoms phantoms are cheaper and e two eagles usually do the job uh, getting four is a bit overkill so having a, a couple of phantoms around that can soak damage potentially for the F-15, plus also can come around a bit cheaper and uh, a bit more affordable than the 
uh, eagles is quite nice. Plus, them being a bit slower actually allows them to be a bit more on target with their Vulcan against enemy helicopters. So they deal a bit more reliable damage against helicopters, which can be nice as well. And then the F4E Phantom, a decent helicopter hunter as well. Not worse than the uh, normal Phantom, actually, as it has two Sidewinders as well. And it costs you a bit less, though not that much anymore. But it also is a decent bomber of enemy ATGM positions and so on. So that's why we take this one. Uh, can deal some damage there, can snipe some CV, some light CVs and so on, can snipe some infantry squads. For 227 kilogram bombs are not that efficient. You don't really want to bomb vehicles with it. It's, it deals really n low damage to those and chances are it will survive and risking a dive bomber for that is not great. So you want to take your targets carefully, but it can get rid of important positions where your artillery would take too long to take care of or so on. And then the, the Phantom comes in nicely on clutch and does the job while still being relatively affordable. And as I said, can come in as a helicopter hunter in a pinch as well. So yeah, this is the third US. It is still a deck all about the heavy tonks and the high quality gear around it. Good fighters or the best fighters to protect it from air bombardment, um, good helicopters to hold good IOVs with the Bradleys, especially now that they have the M2A2, which can also survive a bit of beating and can follow them up a bit better on the offense than the M2A1 can. So all of that really makes it a strong deck still, arguably still the strongest out there, though you have to play slowly with it. You have to get your combined arms online. If you take fights from the get-go and you take losses from the beginning, then your combined arms can fall apart really quickly with this deck, so you have to be careful there. You have to give some crown sometimes, but you can't take it back with this. Especially with the M1A1 just being able to tank a lot of enemy damage whilst one-shotting a lot of IVs with the 22 pen, one-shotting uh, some ta tanks when it gets closer quite easily as well and so on. The M1A1HA is a beast on the push, and you can do that, so you can give up ground early. And you should absolutely consider doing that in some scenarios, especially against some fast decks, because they will run out of steam. Third US games go often into the 30-40 minute mark, because you need that much time to get really onto the board, but then the enemy often just can't stop you at all anymore. So that's the plan there. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you in the next one. Third US in action, and... Bye-bye and have a great day.